Corn School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner, and on this episode of the Corn School, we're talking planters with Andrew Kippen of North Valley Precision Planting here in southern Manitoba. And Andrew, planting is done. Uh, time to put the planter away for the year. But before we do that, what should we be going over when it comes to uh, planter and, and maintenance and some of the issues that uh, we may be dealt with during the planting season? Well, I mean, this is a great time to look at the planter. Um, everything's still fresh in everyone's mind. You know, if there's some issues we had throughout the season, we can address it now and, you know, properly plan to how to, you know, make it better next year instead of waiting last minute, you know, and then rushing everything through to get it in the field. I mean, so the maintenance stuff, I mean, everything, right from the bar back is your most important part of the planter, right? Mm -hmm. So on each row unit, though, start at the front and kind of work your way to the back? Yep. Uh, it's usually the easiest. Just follow as you go through the field, kind of how how the you know the flow of the ground is going by your planter is the best way to look at it. So I always like to start with the row cleaners uh, if you have them. Not everyone has row cleaners, but I know a lot of guys in a in a drought. Um, sometimes they'll try to knock off a bit of that soil, move it out of the way to find moisture or high trash conditions. They're running fairly aggressive to clear that trash out of the way of the row unit. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is that we're we're sending it far enough. Um, if we're not sending it out of the way of the gauge wheels, we run the risk of you know, rolling over top of it, which lifts lifts the row unit, therefore changing depth on the planter, which you know caused a lot of early emergence like we've been talking about. Um, next is your disc. So the opening disc uh, has a very important role. I mean, it's slice and open that soil. So we want that adjusted correctly so we can slice in the soil push it to the side without disturbing it too much. Um, important adjustments on there are making sure we have that two inch contact. So that's usually rides that where the surface dirt would hit the disc. And the reason why that's important is so it doesn't fall in the furrow. So if you can picture, you know, a plow and it's open, well, you're letting all that ride right in there, dry dirt in the furrow, seed, never a good idea. Um, so with that, there's a seed tube guard that, that more than a seed tube it actually holds the disc open which actually sets the width of your furrow so the width of the furrow is important because you need your seed to fall all the way in so if you have a big seed and a narrow furrow your seed may not get to the bottom right seed tube guard also kind of you know, prepares the ground floor of that furrow for the seed to fall into so is seed tube guard maybe a bit of a misnomer in terms of what it actually does it's probably one of the biggest overlooked parts of a planter um, basically because of the name mm -hmm. you know if I had my way I'd change it it should be a furrow creator and that we look at that a little more differently than a seed tube guard okay you don't need much of a furrow or uh, sorry much of a seed tube guard to hold your seed tube so yeah. yeah next would be the gauge wheels yeah gauge wheels I mean that's important it's so what we're trying to do with our gauge wheel is we're trying to firm the ground up as your discs open it so that it doesn't collapse again before that seed drops in. So proper gauge wheel pressure is important, which it's tough to do in all conditions, you know, because we got such varying land over, you know, course of a, a section, right, or even less. Hard to sandy land, you know, which is why it's, you know, so important to have, you know, gauge wheel or gauge wheel, gauge wheel arms, gauge wheels, also with your parallel arms, you know, things shaking and banging around, it makes everything real difficult. Um, you know, also in this planter here, you can probably see that, I don't know if the camera's low enough, but there's a, we call it a seed firmer. So one, we can use it for putting liquid down. Also, it can help push that seed to the bottom of the furrow. There's a lot of guys that run them just for that reason on, only, just making sure that seed is all the way down. Um, went ahead of myself a little bit here, but going back to the gauge wheels, um, there's an adjustment on there that's very important. The contact point between them and the disc it's the same as your discs. Um, you don't want any of your any of your dry dirt to slip between the gauge wheel and the disc because it ends up in the bottom of the furrow, which we don't want dry dirt down there. Um, this one here is a little different than traditional. It's kind of got some aftermarket stuff on it. Um, normally, the adjustment is done back here at the pivot point. Uh, on this particular one, we're, we're doing it with shims on the gauge wheel itself. Um, 
the gauge wheel arm, you know, because sometimes we have that adjustment here is threads. The threads can over time cut into themselves and actually start with a bunch of play. So it makes it very hard to keep that adjustment to the disc. So we got to watch that as, as play happens here. We got to maybe change them or ver verify that adjustment is, is still there. It, it will get to the point where you can't adjust it at all. So after the gauge wheel arm, we want to look at the depth stop. That's another another part of the planter that I think is overlooked a little bit on how important it is. So with the gauge wheel arm and the depth stop, they kind of wear into each other, which changes your depth. It doesn't necessarily change the depth, but it definitely changes where your handle needs to be mm -hmm. as, as it wears. So we got to get in there, make sure um, we don't have a huge wear a wear point into it and it divots um, this one here's a fixed depth stop where some of the newer ones are a walking depth stop so there's a bolt in there that can wear as well because it's it's rocking on that so we just got to keep in mind that those are a few wear points that that you know it affects the depth quite a bit okay you keep calling it a depth stop not a mustache <laughs> The rocking one looks like a mustache if you were to hold it up, um, but on this this planter here, it, okay. it's it's a fixed yeah. depth stop, so it doesn't look like a mustache yeah. per se. But that is another one of the variables that could in influence your depth and differences between one row versus another row. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. After that closing system, um, we've got you know a pivot area that's pretty important. This one again's got an update on it. It's got a bearing system put in there, so it's you know it's going to last a little longer. Um, but a traditional one is usually a, a, a bushing that wears steel and steel, if you will. And it'll move around. Therefore, your closing system there can move on and off your furrow, which doesn't allow you know, the proper closing or proper pressure. Um, it'll tend to wear the front, the backside, pardon me, the backside of this housing off, allowing this frame to move forward because of the spring pull that's in here. So as that happens, the spring tension gets less. So again, making sure we have enough closing pressure is very important. So as all that wears, so does so does that closing. It doesn't have the ability anymore. And then the gauge wheels, uh, or the pardon me, the closing wheels. These ones are smooth. There's a rubber surface on them. A lot of guys don't realize that you can flip them from side to side. Just keep the same wheel on this side. Just flip it 180 degrees. Gives you a new wear surface. If you let it wear too long, eventually this rubber can fall off, or this plastic gets thin. So it's kind of like rotating your tires. I mean, we all do that on our vehicles, or, or should. Um, same idea here. Okay. So, And then the adjustment. Again, they're all uh, on an angle. So there's a hidden access point that's below the ground, which we can't see. So where we want that point is at seed depth or slightly above. So we're keeping that seed where it is. We don't want to be below it. And we can lift it again, changing that depth. Okay. And I guess right now, this time, uh, as the crop is coming up out of the ground, it's kind of telling us how our planter performed as well and maybe giving us some hints as to what uh, what we should be looking at on the planter. Yep, so we're going to go to the field next and this particular planter had a couple rows that we weren't happy with, so we went and dug and found the seed and found out we were shallow. Um, so we came back to the planter to kind of make sure you know, we had everything set right and found out indeed we had a couple settings off, simple to do quickly to overlook um, but that's why it's so important to you know get into that field go 10 15 20 feet stop get out and dig each row and make sure you're happy with the depth and don't be done there I mean we may have to do this in a few days later a different field different crop condition different ground condition just everything changes as we go through the year so not just sit in the cab and yeah. plant yeah <laughs> all right well, thanks for your time, Andrew, and all of your insight taking us through uh, all the different components here on this planter. You're welcome.